Okay, so that's roughly eight tons of fuel, wow. so eight thousand liters of fuel, roughly a day. Okay. Wow. Um, and that's running on one generator. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot. Okay, I'm here with Ruben. I just put my little, what do you call these? Earplugs. Earplugs in, and we're gonna head into the engine room and I'm gonna mic him so that you can hear him and you probably won't be able to hear me, but I don't know anything about it, so he will be our expert. Okay, so just this is the, uh, we just were in the ECR and I think we'll uh, finish there as well. So this is the uh, engine control room, also a uh, break room. So this is where we meet uh, in the mornings and where we discuss what we're doing for the day so that all the departments can uh, explain and know from each other what they're doing. In general, in engineering, you have the chief engineer, who's the head of the department, and then you have the second engineer, who's responsible for the engine room, uh, hotel engineer, which is myself, uh, responsible for the ventilation and air conditioning and uh, some medical systems, for example. Uh, and then you have the chief electrician for all the electrical uh, uh, systems on board and the technical stores that uh, provide all the spare parts we need. Can you hear me? I might uh, speak a little bit louder. So this is uh, the forward main engine room. And over here, where it's a little bit more quiet, we have the uh, other two uh, main engines. When we're in fuel service, we only run one engine because that produces enough power for, uh, for uh, all the electricity we use. Let's go more forward and we go down one step. So over here we have our uh, sewage treatment plant. So all the, yeah, basically stuff from the toilets and all the shower water uh, is processed in here. And after that, it's clean enough to be uh, dumped over the site or stored on board. So this is actually one of our three uh, water mist systems. Yeah. So on board, normally you, you will have a, um, a sprinkler system, but this ship is outfitted with uh, water mist. So that means if there is a fire in your cabin or any other space, uh, the sprinkler will go off, but it will create a water mist because this system puts uh, about 130 bars of pressure of water through those nozzles. So that creates a very fine mist and that's a lot better at uh, yeah, killing the fire or yeah, to extinguish the fire. Um, so we have three of these installations. Um, yeah, so that's all for the safety of the ship, the firefighting of the ship. So there's a long hallway to the, all the way forward to the forward end of the ship. Uh, so on this side, the port side, we have, uh, this is called the medical air systems. So this is actually all for the hospital. So we have one uh, four bar medical air plant. We have a seven bar and then the medical vacuum. So these uh, compressed air and vacuum is all for the hospital. Um, so our department actually maintains that. And then when you have the seven bar uh, compressor plant that also provides the compressed air to the oxygen generator, which is on deck eight. So on the ship, we produce our own oxygen for the, for the hospital. Uh, also on deck eight, we have an anesthesia gas uh, scavenging system. So that's basically a, yeah, a vacuum cleaner that sucks up all the, uh, all the air that's coming from the an anesthesia oh, machines. Yeah. Uh, my wife is an anesthesia oh, yeah, nurse, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you learn uh, quite a few things <laughs> about the uh, hospitals yeah. uh, when you work here. So over here is our uh, fresh water plant. So all the, the pumps for the potable water that goes through the ship as well for the hot water. So a fun fact about this ship is that uh, all the condensate that we pick up with the air uh, conditioning is being collected in uh, three separate tanks. It's called the condensate tanks. And from that condensate we make technical water. And that technical water is used for the, um, for the laundries. So we have, in total, we have three laundries. So that's the hospital laundry, the steward's laundry, and the crew laundry. So you don't use drinking water for that, but you use the technical water. Also, the uh, 
sterilization, so where they clean the uh, medical instruments, is using the technical water for cleaning their equipment. So that saves us on taking less water in to be used for cleaning purposes, because it's not used as drinking water, but just to clean items. Um, and basically the condensate is free water anyway, so we'll actually put it to use, so that's good. We have our uh, RO plant, or that means the reverse osmosis plant, and so in case of yeah, low sh uh, shortage of drinking water, we could go out and then produce our own drinking water on sea. So this is one of the two uh, chiller or yeah, chiller machinery spaces. So if we walk over here, we see one of the four chillers we have. So these ones produce the cold water for the uh, air conditioning. So at the moment we're running one of the forward ones. So that's why it's a little bit more quiet in this space. Um, currently the conditions in Senegal are pretty, pretty good. So we can run by uh, only one at about 50 to 60% capacity. Uh, so we're saving some energy over there. So in total on the ship we have 22 AC rooms with uh, a lot of air handling units. So it's a big, it's a, it's a big job, big job to keep that going and keep people uh, comfortable. And also here is um, where all the water comes in. So when we take water on from ashore, it comes first through a few uh, sediment filters and then it goes into six tanks about yeah six tanks that are in front of here and then chlorine is uh, added and then uh, yeah depending on if it's ready for use we'll pump it to a, a buffer tank and from there it's being pumped into the ship over here is the steward's laundry that um, the sewage department uses so for all the hospitality laundry and for the cabins for example um, and then over here we have the hospital laundry and then over here we have some of the uh, cold rooms and dry stores and then over here we're back at the ECR where we started there's always a watchkeeper uh, yeah, on watch. So he's 24-7, uh, there's someone in the engine room. So why, that's uh, Bertrand <laughs> from Cameroon. Watchkeeper. He's the watchkeeper for, uh, for tonight. So from here, all the engine room alarms come in. So think about uh, hey, something with one of the generators or something with one of the pumps. For example, the fresh water pumps that uh, uh, pump your uh, potable water into the, equip into the accommodation. Here we have a few interesting screens. One is the fire panel. Then over here we have our uh, HVAC computer, so we can monitor all the HVAC equipment and then change it uh, depending what people are comfortable with. Uh, some are always too warm, some are always too cold, but yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> um, then we have our uh, also our garbage management system, so it's a pretty yeah, advanced system as in, uh, I think I heard Morgan talk about uh, the macerators. So all the, uh, yeah, so it's all the food waste goes through macerators and it's being, uh, yeah, transported by a vacuum system to a, um, a collecting tank. And from there it's uh, being pumped into a dryer. So all the food waste gets dried. And then after when it's dried, it's more like a fertilizer. So we're doing some experiments with that actually to see if that, if it works. Otherwise we can also burn it in an incinerator. So all the yeah, waste that we produce, we either uh, yeah, incinerate it or we, in a different way, we try to uh, get rid of it. Yourself. Yes, as much as possible instead of yeah, giving it to uh, the country where we are. I would love to hear I'm guessing you have a lot of work experience off the ship as well. And so I'm wondering what you have found is the main difference between working on the ship in the engine room and working back home in the Netherlands uh, and what that's been like. 
Oké. Okay. Ja. Um, ja, zo ben ik met Merchips voor six years. Um, oh, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, mostly worked in engineering. Yeah. Um, but it's, I think it's the community and also what is a good opportunity is you work with a lot of different cultures. So yeah. you learn from each other. Yeah. People with different experiences and you learn from that. Yeah. And yeah, to also work together in a common goal because the goal is to get in this case this ship to Africa yes. and now we do surgeries but to to keep that going and keep the ship in a good shape yeah and that uh, that motivates as well like mission unified mission yeah exactly and that uh, yeah in, in engineering that uh, that unites each other to uh, yeah to get work done yeah. sometimes there are some urgent things that need to <laughs> done and then you come together and, and it will get fixed as you're preparing to leave soon and new engineers come all the time and go but what would you if anything what would you say to an engineer who might be preparing to come? Like, is there anything you wish you would have known before coming to the ship or any encouragement you'd want to give to someone who's considering coming and working in this space? Yeah. Oh, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, it's good questions. Uh, I think uh, it's worth it. Like I said, you work with a lot of yeah, different people, different cultures. Uh, this week we started with our day crew, for example. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing to work with the locals and learn from them and about their culture because we're here for a long time too yes. uh, because you're a team you're just like team building you get to know other people and uh, I think that that's really worth it also the work it's very interesting a lot of yeah new equipment some equipment you might not have worked with before yeah. or you have worked with it before yeah. so you can use that experience yeah yeah one thing I wanted to know before I uh, joined the ship yeah. Usually the first week can be very overwhelming because uh, yes. a lot of uh, yes, <laughs> that <laughs> that, uh, just to take the time to get to know uh, yeah the ship, the organization, how things work, and then mm. yeah just take that time and then yes. after that yeah it uh, becomes a lot. Up. Don't give up. Never give up. Yes. No. That's actually a really good point. That you can have all these expectations, and you get yeah. here, and you're you're too overwhelmed. But you have to you gotta wait it out. Yeah. Because it does. Yeah. It sounds like I mean, this experience turned into six years for you. Yes. So clearly, yeah. Yeah. it becomes a part of your heart if yeah. you give it time. Yeah. And um, be flexible and too. Be flexible. <laughs> yes. And it sounds like what yeah. I'm hearing is have an open heart towards all yeah. different cultures, experiences, yeah. people, all yeah. of that. If you can have just an open heart and open expectations, maybe. Yeah. And yeah. that will help. You and Silke have done such a great job creating a home here and helping this organization. So thank you for all you've done to make this ship a better place and a more functioning place. Thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah. It's been so nice. <laughs> That's it. <laughs>